Well, hello there again, my friends, and welcome back to Carpo's channel. That's me. I'm sitting here in my kitchen, an unusual spot for me to make a video, but uh, the light was right and uh, a little brighter than sitting in the room there, so I thought I would make it right here. I have a few quiet moments throughout the day these days. That wasn't always true. I have kids and they're always running around the house and for the last 20 years or so there's always been, you know, background noise at some point. But in a, it, at any rate, <laughs> um, around 2011 when my, uh, well I have one older kid who was, he's 27, but my youngest are 9 and 12. My 12 year old, when he was about two, I started my YouTube channel. It gave me something to do, something to, a way to upload my thoughts, to share my experiences with the world. But at first, looking back, it was me sharing ideas about prepping, you know, getting ready for an apocalypse or a disaster, not in a panicked way. I was not a prepper, but just rather better safe than sorry. Um, a little bit of kind of spiritual mumbo jumbo around 2012, getting into Kundalini and yoga, then moving on to Manly P. Hall and Alan Watts, getting into Buddhism, Hinduism, then moving into several different segments of my life. And it's been 11 years, 2011 to 2022 now. And in that time, it's funny, I've I had a second channel that I called Carpos. It was actually for my garden. I used to upload all of my grow room stuff and my cannabis. And then YouTube started giving me dangerous content warnings. Um, at least with cannabis, they made it 18 and older on a lot of them. But uh, the same thing happened with Kratom videos and any controversial topic at any one moment. And uh, over the years, gradually lost that ability to speak freely and talk honestly about how I feel. And I do my best to get around that. And I think that's pretty obvious. I still say what I have to say without beating around the bush, but also without making any strong, bold claims that would get my video de not even demonetized. I don't care about that. I, as you, most of you know, there's no commercials on my videos. Some of the older ones, I put them on there because YouTube, uh, was going to do it anyway. They basically said, any video, we can put a commercial on if you don't. So I was like, well, I'm gonna monetize it if they don't. It might bring me in 40 cents a month or something. Um, but I don't do this for the money, obviously. After all the videos and time I've put into it, sitting down, setting up lights and the camera as much as I can to try to get a reasonable video, I still don't follow any protocol, like a lot of channels, you know, after a year or so, they go and they invest in all this equipment and they have these really fancy sets, highly focused cameras, and uh, a lot of editing. And as you know, I just sit here in front of the camera. And I believe that works to my advantage because it's the only way I can convey how I truly feel without censoring any of my thoughts. And... <clears throat> To be brutally honest, you know, I I feel like we're living in a time when people are completely losing their mind to where we can't even discuss normal topics and it really does feel like kind of the collapse of Rome, if you will. You know, all the research in the past I've done about fallen societies, um, actually there's a great book. Uh, Guns, Germs, and Steel, and then there's another one called Collapse, and they're both by Jared Diamond. And Collapse is about, it's called Collapse, How Societies Choose to Fail or Succeed. And basically, <clears throat> I don't believe I ever finished it completely, but a lot of the stories within it talk about societies that really doom themselves by overconsuming and becoming basically idiots, treating each other like shit, having strong opinions towards the end, and then just kind of falling apart. And uh, I feel like we're at that crossroads right now. Like we really need to step back for a moment and laugh at ourselves. Because if we can't, then uh, it's only going to descend into more chaos. But the thing is, I, I'm quickly losing any hope that that's possible. That people can get over their own short versions of what life is and what truth is. This... The way that people are so easily divided and fooled, 
makes it really hard to even discuss topics. You know, it's actually the topic of the podcast I'm going to be doing later. Um, I was going to make a video about it, but I thought it would just get censored and deleted and pushed to the bottom because it was along the line of how the loudest voices have the least to say. But also, if you talk about certain topics, you're deemed to be this or that. If you talk about differences within gender, race, you're accused of being a racist or a misogynist. If you talk about obesity or fat shaming, if you talk about abuse, even alcoholism, it's a disease. And, you know, I feel, this is how I personally feel right now, that as much as I grew up as a male who can embrace my emotion, acknowledge my own connection to nature and to people, to open up my heart to others and to not be, you know, I, I, I try to keep my strength, but at the same time, I, I don't hold back with how I feel. I'm honest about my feelings, right? Well, even with that, I've realized that some people take it to the extent of using it as a value to be weak. That might sound uh, extreme, but um, if you know what I mean, if you talk about being a strong person, you're sometimes accused of being toxic, you know, like toxic masculinity or being for the patriarchy. You know, I could go on and on about how absurd things have become, but what it really comes down to here is that people have become weak. Not just the youth, not just Gen Z. I know people like to point to the younger generation and say, look at how weak they are. Well, there's a lot of strong young people too. There are just as many people who have become weakened that are middle-aged or elderly because we've all been weakened and softened by the internet and by all the bullshit that we encounter online in believing that that's really how people feel. Because it is a collective illusion that most of the people feel the way that we think, think they feel. In fact, we would be hard pressed to even identify how we really feel if we were actually asked about it. And I've found that to be true because anytime you talk to people, they completely shut out. They don't want to talk about how they feel. They don't want to talk about the true, you know, motive behind why we want to be divided. And I think it's because people are frustrated and angry and they're taking it out on each other. And that should stop, but it's not going to as long as people are frustrated and angry because people always look for an enemy. People do come together in a major disaster, but in slowly unfolding disasters, they tend to become suspicious of each other. This is how they've got people to turn each other in. You know, during uh, times of occupation by other countries, you know, spying on your neighbor, even in the US back in the 40s and 50s, 60s, your neighbor might be a communist and people were calling the feds all the time. Being suspect of each other and our motives instead of realizing that most people mean well. Because if you realize that most people mean well, you stop looking at your neighbor as the enemy and start looking to the real problem, problems. Um, because if you don't do, deal with the real problems, then it comes back as more problems in the community where you can't trust each other. Like we have now with thieves running around, stealing not just you know catalytic converters, but cars in broad daylight. We had a home invasion up the street from here, just like, you know, I was at a park at like 10, 30, 11 at night. When I got home, my wife read that night, I guess, that there was a home invasion like not too long after that. So we were at the park they had just shut down. So I must have just missed it, but I can't imagine being caught up in that bullshit. But uh, <laughs> I had my kids with me. To think that, you know, something that close was going on at the same time, it's like you just want to get the hell away from people. And you want to assume that all people are evil because of that one incident that you heard about. But it's not the case. It's the same reason that when my car got stolen, again from the driveway, I had watched my cameras every day for weeks. Why? Wait for something to happen, then look at your cameras. But I was obsessed because i that's what was on my mind. And I was in the mode that crime is happening everywhere because I had been wronged. I had been ripped off. 
And I think this is how we can magnify this to the bigger picture, that people feel this way about everything. If they got slighted, that's the biggest problem. If they have a, say, immigration problem then immig in their town, then immigration is the biggest problem, right? If they have no health care, then health care is the biggest problem, right? Um, if people have drug addiction in their family and somebody died, then overdose prevention may be their cause. Folks delve into whatever affects them individually, but very seldom really step back and see that everyone else has problems too. They're just different problems, you know what I mean? And that empathy for each other's plight has been lost. And that's why we are failing. That's why society is falling apart, because we're allowing it to by having that king's comfort, that gluttonous bullshit, um, where we're allowed to consume what we want, do what we want, where we celebrate our weaknesses instead of not shaming each other, because that doesn't work. I eat my words from years ago. I said we should shame people who do bad things. I don't agree with that any longer. And I take that back that I ever said that. I actually believe that public shaming does nothing. Understanding and discussion is probably the best asset we have. Um, <clears throat> believe me, there are certain cases where public shaming, or at least maybe not public shaming, but rather public awareness is important. If somebody does something horrendous enough, telling everyone about it is important. And we want to let people know that murder and mayhem are not the things that we want in our society, obviously. But shaming people for a misunderstood tweet, that kind of crap, is just nonsense. And um, so I think that we've become too weak because we're even trying to ban and censor free speech. And if you talk bad about the wealthy, then you're just jealous. But if you talk bad about... Um, Self, if you talk about self-productivity and motivation, then you don't understand the plight of somebody who doesn't have anything. If you talk about equality, you're a communist. If you talk about wealth, you're a capitalist. And the list goes on and on and on. And I'll get more into that, but it goes on into religion and various political thoughts. But um, victim culture has to die. I guess that's what I'm getting at, that it really has to die um, because nobody gets out alive. And I'm sure you know exactly what I mean there. We may move on to something bigger and better. I don't know. But for now, um, nobody gets out alive. And when the shit really gets bad, people do help each other. People do care about each other. Naturally. But not when they're forced to. Not forced charity. This is why I've changed my opinions on socialism and communism and capitalism over the years. Shifting back and forth saying, still the quote that sticks in my mind is from, I believe, Winston Churchill. And he said, democracy is the worst form of government, except all the others that have been tried. Basically meaning they all suck. And we don't have a real utopia or way to handle this. Because we're still animals. And we can put suits on, we can put ties on. It doesn't change who we are. So forcing b beliefs or forcing people to say or do certain things is not a successful path to happiness to a society. But also... Forcing people not to say things because we're afraid of what they might say is an equal problem. And if we can't talk about our differences, then we'll never accomplish any type of coming together. And uh, that's how I feel about that. So that's my ramble for the day. Thanks for listening. Uh, be sure to check out the podcast, 15 Minute Free Thinking. I think the link's in the description. Um, not to the video I'm going to make about this, but about... It's a link to, I think, the general, you know, podcast, but I appreciate all your support. I also appreciate my patrons on Patreon. I'll be posting some more things on there soon, I promise. And um, um, I'm still working on all my other stuff. I'll have my t-shirts and my jewelry available. I'm working on a, a circuit board guitar head right now. And uh, my guitars, which are still in the process of being built. This is my rosewood fretboard with my uh, zebra wood neck so yeah i'm building these and those will be available hopefully hopefully soon and i appreciate you all thanks for coming along and listening to my ramble and if you have any ideas about how to improve the future for people please let me know honestly i'm 
you know, I don't want to be the complainer. I want to be, I want to be able to solve things in my own mind. And I believe I, I have some pretty good ideas about how to improve the world, but they're not going to, you know, come to fruition, obviously, at least not overnight. I'm, I'm, I'm a realist, not an idealist. And I know that people feel differently than I do. And I understand and have a understanding that other people have different brains that develop differently than mine. Even though we might have some sort of a high minor connection, we are all individuals. And that means everybody else sees things differently than each other. And that to me is enough to know that I don't know shit. And I think if we all realize that, then we can kind of laugh together. Because if we can't laugh at ourselves, then we've already failed. And we're all idiots. Be well, my friends.